Okay, uh, can you just give me your full name, please? Uh, my name is Nassim Ashraf. How many children do you have, Nassim? Four children. And how old are they? Uh, 19, 14, 12 and 7. So, why are you dead against uh, relationships and sex education being taught to uh, primary school children? Yeah, I, I, th I think that's a very good question and we're not dead against it. Uh, we're, what, we're, what we're saying is that uh, parental cons consultation is not being sought. What we're saying is that the statutory guidelines stipulate that parents should be consulted, must be consulted uh, on devising the uh, programme, devising the policy, devising the resources or, or looking at resources together. What we're saying is that that's not happening. And that's why we are challenging uh, what the schools are doing and some of the schools. Uh, not all of them because uh, a lot of schools that we have approached have given us a very good feedback very uh, positive feedback and they've taken our views on board and they've actually started to work with us what we're saying that, uh, about the schools that aren't working with us is that to get on board with us and start developing programs and resources together so are you happy for your children to learn about gay relationships uh, it depends what you mean by uh, are we happy to learn about gay relationships. If you're saying that are we uh, happy that uh, gay relationships or even sex itself is promoted in schools, in primary schools from the age of six or seven, then no, we're not happy with that. But if you're saying that it should be taught in a, in a, in a manner which is inclusive, cohesive and uh, as a way of uh, trying to eradicate um, hatred and racism and prejudices, then of course we need to be doing that as parents uh, and I don't think that I, th I think the school should be consulting with the parents to teach that together in a cohesive manner. So, can I just... so for example um, if your child is being taught that they can have uh, parents so if your child so if your child is taught that they can another child can have two mummies or two daddies would you be happy with that? Well, you know, it's funny you should ask that question because that's the line that uh, the uh, government is using. Uh, that how how do you explain people? Uh, how do you explain to children that have got two daddies or two mummies? Now, the fact of the matter is that in our culture, uh, we've always had two daddies. I've got Thaya Abu and I've got my Abu, which means dad, right? So my uncle, <laughs> uh, effectively, uh, I call him Thaya Abu, and my dad, I call him Abu. Now, uh, even my own niece calls me daddy and she was fostered by myself. So there are plenty of other alternative scenarios where children can have two mummies or two daddies. What our questioning or our line of thought has all of a sudden become very presumptuous that we automatically presume that the parent or the child who is asking that I've got two mummies or two daddies, automatically we're presuming that they come from a homosexual parenting background. That isn't always the case. There's always an alternative way and if that child has been isolated or bullied in that school because she's got two mummies or two daddies, then that child should be dealt with individually. And it should be dealt with in a, in a, in a very sensitive way with the parental consent of that child on board so that that child is not feeling isolated. And that child is not being used in a, pl or cr a platform being created where that child is being bullied either. Because when you start uh, saying things like that, and if that's the only child, look at the other scenario. How, how, what kind of mental health trauma would that child go through if that is the only child who's speaking to her friends or his friends in the playground and she's the only one with two mummies? She's the only one with two daddies. Whereas, and she, now she's feeling socially insecure because she feels that everybody else has got a mummy and a daddy. Why have I only got two mummies? So that's another question and that's creating a platform for that child to be bullied, in my opinion. I mean, some people listening to that might be thinking, well, you know, are you not simply just uh, trying to hide your children from the fact that these days, given how society has evolved, that there are um, people in gay relationships with children? Of course, there are people with gay relationships and we're not hiding that at all. In our, in our household, and I can only speak for myself and the other parents, but uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is we have these talks on the, di on the dining table when we deem it's required and necessary for our child to learn about this. What we don't want is a school to take that right away from us. So you're saying that it's not the schools that should be teaching about gay relationships, it's actually the parents. It's actually the parents, that's exactly what I'm saying. The parents have a right to teach their children. If a child comes home and asks me, Daddy, in my school today, one boy said to me that all Muslims are terrorists. 
it's up to me to put that right. And similarly, this 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 uh, uh, narrative that you know, when my child comes home and says to me, "Daddy, I've been approached today by a, a girl, a friend of mine, who has two mummies or two daddies, and she says that her mummy and daddy are gay." That's absolutely fine. There's there's not there's nothing wrong with that. We we can teach our children. Well, that's right. This is what it means, etc. We don't we we feel that our our rights are are being breached really. I mean, some people uh, and including the schools would say that they have a duty now, uh, in fact, a legal duty from September twenty twenty to teach children about gay relationships. Uh, so you know, it's actually the law. Uh, absolutely, it's the law. But what the law doesn't stipulate is how it needs to be taught. I think what the what the law uh, the, the government has done is they've dangled the carrot and then just left it to the school and parents to fight it fight it out amongst themselves, almost creating that platform for 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 division. Uh, what we're saying is that the second part of the law, which nobody's talking about, is the statutory guidelines. And the statutory guidelines actually stipulate that parents must be consulted. The question we should be asking our our schools is. Why are the schools not conforming to that part of the guidelines? That is also law. I mean, one gay person has said that parents who are saying similar things as yourselves are purely wanting to indoctrinate their children. I think it's the other way around, isn't it? They, I mean, they are procrastinating this, this kind of uh, whole ethos that uh, we're, we're indoctrinating. But uh, what we're saying is that any kind of pro promotion, any kind of promotion, uh, can be seen as somebody trying to promote a single agenda when there are very, very few numbers. There, in fact, there are hardly any stats of parent, parents or children being bullied in school through uh, being uh, coming from LGBTQ community or parents who are gay. Very, very small number of stats. But the number of stats around Islamophobia is much, much higher. We're not dealing with that. But this is about promoting equality in the eyes of the law mm. and promoting um, uh, different types of relationships uh, to make sure that people aren't or don't feel discriminated against. And that's absolutely correct. Including and, homosexual people. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that we champion. However, the, the way that we can, there are always, always alternative methods that can be deployed and used in order to promote equality, cohesiveness, inclusiveness. This, I don't feel, taking out a particular agenda and using that to promote inclusiveness is not, uh, is not, is not going to be fruitful, I don't think. Can you just give me an example? You've just said that you champion homosexuality. How is that? I didn't say I champion homos homosexuality. I said I, I champion inclusiveness and cohesiveness. And cohesiveness and inclusiveness, I, I'll give you an example. We run a food bank. 65% of the people... No, this that, is about... Sorry, you're I just know taking that. it away no, no, from the teaching giving, of the RSE. I'm giving you an example of inclusiveness and cohesiveness. We run a food bank and 65% of, of the people that use that food bank are, are white indigenous people. They can't read and write. That is a much more serious issue that, we're, and, and, you know, that we need to be looking at in schools. I'm talking about schools. They went to school here, all born and bred here. Why can't they read and write? Surely the attainment of maths, English and sciences should be top of the agenda. Now, some gay Muslims are actually saying that uh, Muslims who've taken the similar stance uh, are, are not being progressive. What's your reaction? Well, my reaction would be that have you spoken to the Jewish community? Have you spoken to the Christian community? I'm presuming you've done their interviews as well, or are you isolating just Muslims? Well, <laughs> it's the Muslims who are complaining about it and who are setting up WhatsApp groups and sending out withdrawal letters. Uh, I don't think so. I think you'll find that the Christian uh, forums are doing exactly the same. The Jewish... Uh, a community actually two weeks ago said that we're prepared to leave the country if our rights are not listened or heard. So how this has become a Muslim issue is beyond me, to be honest. Now, you say that you've got something like 300 people on different WhatsApp groups. I mean, what are their main concerns? Their main concerns are exactly what I've said to you, that their, their rights are being breached. They're not being consulted. Uh, the schools have a very closed door policy. And they've basically said that this is the law, we're going to teach it. A lot of schools have said that. Um, when we're approaching the schools, obviously the schools have now started to change their mind. And they've started looking at the second element of the law. It is law to teach it, but how it needs to be delivered and, uh, and the way that the resources are going to be used or which resources are going to be used is up to the school. And what, what we're saying to parents and we're advising parents to work with the schools in order to create a policy which is inclusive. So what's, how would that policy look in your eyes? 
Well, it'll be a very... What exactly, at a grassroots level, will be taught to your child? Well, I'm not, I'm not certain of the detail just yet because nothing's actually been devised, right? How I want it to look is something that is pleasing to both sides. We want to, we want to promote this inclusiveness, we want to promote the cohesiveness, but what we're saying is that we shouldn't be using one particular orientation in order to, to promote just that agenda. Now, you were saying to me earlier when we uh, last discussed this that if the schools don't listen, you can see people going onto the streets. What do you mean by this? Uh, definitely, 100%. I, 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 I back that up and I'll say it again, that uh, if the schools are not going to come on board, if the local authority is not going to go, go, go on, come on board, it's not something we're going to be promoting. We're not going to be saying to them that uh, pull your children out, but I can see that happening. I can see this leading to riots. In what sense? In the sense that uh, so, there's, there's going to be... Sorry, sorry, can you just take your foot away from the chair? <coughs> okay, that hangs very well. So, in what sense can you see people taking to the streets? Are you talking just about Oldham or elsewhere? Well, I, I'm from Oldham and we've had riots here before, so uh, I can see that happening again, absolutely. When the, when the local authority or when there, uh, when there is a, uh, a platform and uh, it's giving promotion to division, and it's promoting division and it's creating a them and us scenario, then that will, when people feel that their voices are not heard, then unfortunately they, they will only know how to strike back. And that means picketing, it means striking, it means withdrawal of children, it means and possibly potentially even riots. But this is about the law and promoting equality, not just for non-heterosexual uh, people but also for heterosexual people. I think that's a good point that you make. Uh, I, I would even take objection to my five-year-old or six-year-old learning about heterosexual relationships, not just the LGBT thing. Um, but the, the point I'm making is that why is that so important? It's not just about inclusiveness and cohesiveness. This, this agenda has a, a other, other deri derivatives to it. Like now, Well, um, the, the, the fact is that when, when we're talking about children, innocent children at that age, is it actually appropriate for us to teach them? We keep saying it's law, but the second part of the law is also statutory, which means that we must take on the parent. What is the big problem with the, with the, uh, children, uh, with the schools taking on parent consultation? What seems to be the issue there? Why can't they include the parents in devising the policy? What is the problem there? So you're saying that uh, schools in Oldham have not consulted with parents? We're saying that all the schools that we have uh, been in touch with have started to devise a policy which is more inclusive. That's what we're saying. We're saying that a lot of the schools didn't initially, but now as we're approaching them, we're pro approaching them with dialogue. We're not approaching them with uh, threats of uh, withdrawing our children. We're approaching them to say that let's create something which is more uh, coherent with what's going on with what's happening, it abides by the law, ticks all the boxes of Ofsted, because obviously you know that Ofsted are giving brownie points for this, aren't they? Which obviously is the carrot that, that I was talking about earlier. The, the point is that unless we do this together, it's not, gonna, it's, not gonna be, it's not gonna work out well, I don't think. So at the end of the day, if your seven-year-old is going to be taught about gay relationships in primary school, is going to be taught that some children have two mummies and two daddies, what are you going to do? Are you going to withdraw them or withdraw him or her? Well, the, 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 current, the current status is this, that if the, if the school is not going to uh, devise an inclusive policy con with consultation of the parents, then yes, people will withdraw them. If the, if the school works with the parents, then I can't see any parents withdrawing the child. Why should they? Even if they are going to teach what I've just said? Well, they, they're going to teach it in accordance to what the law is stating, that they need to teach. But the, uh, the point is, how it's being taught is, is what's important. So what, what do you mean by this? How it's well, there are alternative resources available. Where, uh, you know, I don't want to name any resources because uh, we, don't, we don't need to, but the fact is there are many alternative resources available. There are ways of teaching this that uh, takes into account everything. So if a child, for example, if a child points out that she's being bullied or he's been bullied because they come from a uh, gay parental uh, relationship, then that child needs to be treated as a one-off case. It needs to be treated as such all the assessments, the needs of that child need to be met. But don't create a platform for other children to bully that child. So you're saying that if this is taught at schools, it could lead to bullying yes. from Muslim children? Not, not just Muslim children. Well, I'm here in Oldham. Well, uh, uh, the majority of Oldham is not Muslim, by the way. 
<laughs> we, we, we have yeah, a but we're talking about it being taught in schools where predominantly most of the children are Muslim, aren't yeah. we? Well, yes, we are. But what I'm saying is that whether if a child, a child at the age of seven doesn't know whether they're Muslim or Christian or whatever, that's not important to them, really, at that age, because they're innocent, completely innocent. They don't have any particular belief factor. They're probably not even sure what they are, how, how to comb their hair. They've probably got more important things to do, like dolls, etc., the point I'm making is that if a child, an innocent child, a six-year-old or seven-year-old, is if we're teaching openly that this, oh, by the way, uh, this child has got two mummies and because they come from a gay relationship, that is going to create a, a, a platform for that child to be bullied. And what about parents who would say, well, actually, you know, we're gay parents and we want our we want other children in the school to be aware that there are families like us who do exist. Absolutely. And those, those gay parents have the right to create awareness, but not through the school. They should be championing that with the parents of that school to eradicate that hatred, not going to the school. So not being taught at school at no, all? Not being, well, no, I'm not saying not being taught at school. I'm saying it's about that. Issue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no, there's no need to, to, to say that in the school. Why bring that? Why make something an issue when it's not an issue already? There's no stats to prove that the children have been bullied because they come from uh, homosexual backgrounds or homosexual uh, parental backgrounds. But this isn't about bullying, is it? It's about telling pupils that there are pupils who don't have uh, this is a similar sort of family as they may have well it, it is about and that there are gay people in society yes. it is it is about bullying because that's what the government has said that all we want to do is teach people not to uh, how to love each other how to tolerate each other and how not to bully each other that's what the government has stipulated on this and that's why they're teaching it but they're actually doing quite the opposite they are, they are going to create a platform for bullying the government saying it's doing this to protect children and to make children make sure children are safe and to prepare them for adulthood and adult society. That's right. And they, that's what the government is saying. But I fear that that's the, the direct opposite of that's going to happen. Okay. <coughs> Great. That's one of the best interviews I've ever heard. I have to cover all bases, don't I? Yeah. So, so sorry. Um, your name.